Hello, today we are going to see a very emotional, important poem about war called Dulce e de Colum S by Robert Owen. Now, as you probably know, during the World War I, newspapers, uh, posters, in social life, there was a pressure to push young men into joining the army. Wilfred Owen was a young man who was teaching in France when the war broke in 1914. He wanted to be a soldier, he wanted to help, to contribute to his country, and so he returned to England to enlist, to become a soldier. Two years later, he was sent in France, and then he was forced to go back to England because uh, he had a problem. He was uh, shocked after a shell, that is a bomb, a bomb exploded beside him. But when he returned home, he was a different person. Let's see now the first uh, sentence of the poem. And, uh, let's try to understand one thing, first of all. So, we have a certain expectation about soldiers at war. Owen, when he enlisted because of the propaganda, he had a certain expectation. So, when we start reading this poem, we see that uh, the reality is not just what expected. Bent double, like old beggars under sacks, knock-kneed, coughing like hags, we cursed through sludge, till on the haunting flares we turned our backs, and towards our distant rest began to trudge. Men marched asleep. Many had lost their boots, but limped on, bloodshod. All went lame, all blind, drunk with fatigue, deaf, even to the hoots of gas shells dropping softly behind. The first line describes how the soldiers are returning to the base camp. We should imagine them described as heroes. Instead, the first line shows with a very slow rhythm to suggest uh, the pain, the misery the soldiers are encountering the first line tries to imitate the slow walking back to the camp with the soldiers. And this is done using punctuation. And this line tells us about the condition, both physically and mentally, of the man. And it's a, the appalling description, a terrible description. And he, Owen, portrays this by his use of similes, metaphors and vocabulary. For example, he uses similes such as like old beggars. That is, he compares soldiers to people who are not respected, such as the elderly homeless, who don't have any place where to sleep, who cover themselves with, you know, something, a blanket, a sack, during the night. Bent double like hags. A hag is an old ugly woman. So this illustrates how many of the men fall ill or sick. Imagine living in the trenches. And they've aged. And Owen also uses metaphors such as drunk with fatigue. They are so exhausted that they are almost unaware of what is happening around them. The use of the vocabulary is effective in communicating the message of fatigue. He uses words such as sludge, trudge, haunting, to describe the harsh, hard conditions of the battlefield. You can tell just from their sound they have a very negative connotation. Sludge is thick, wet mud. You know, after a lot of rain, you cannot walk properly on the ground. Trudge is when you walk slowly with heavy steps because you are tired. Haunting. Haunting means that the intense light of the flares does not leave them, accompanies them. And now this uh, is very interesting because many soldiers suffered post-traumatic syndrome. Uh, that is, uh, all the bombs around them, explosions. When they came back home, many had trouble in, uh, you know, coping with uh, being uh, near 
bright lights and harsh sounds because they still were haunted by the experience of being in the trenches during the battles. We're going to see something, uh, a reference to these in a novel by Virginia Woolf called Mrs. Dalloway, where one of the protagonists is still affected by, by the syndrome and is not uh, clear in his mind. Gas! Gas! Quick, boys! An ecstasy of fumbling, fitting the clumsy helmets just in time. But someone still was yelling out, and stumbling and floundering like the man in fire, or lime. Dim through the misty panes and thick green light, as under a green sea, I saw him drowning. In all my dreams, before my helpless sight, he plunges at me, guttering, choking, drowning. In the circumstance, the rhythm suddenly increases to display the panic of the soldier during the gas attack. Gas, gas, quick! Uh, the punctuation is used to create this faster rhythm, and exclamation marks and short sentences speed up the pace and create excitement. This gives us the, an image of the weary, exhausted soldier suddenly changing into panic-stricken men, you know, trying to run away from the situation. When he says, gas, gas, quick boys, there is direct speech to create panic. And he also uses some words like stumbling, floundering, fumbling, to describe uh, the desperate actions of the dying man. Yelling and drowning, these two words, give the reader a feeling of chaos. The simile, like a man in fire, is used to describe the agony which the man is encountering suggest how the man is twisting in his desperation as the gas burns him. So not all the soldiers managed to put the mask on. One of them was too late to find the mask and put it on, and so he was uh, affected by the gas. At this point, there is something very peculiar. There is a description of a horrible situation, but in such a way it, it might appear beautiful. First of all, I want to show you this in the text. Then I will show you a video of a modern ballet that can give you an idea of uh, the effect in always trying to achieve. When he says, as under a green sea I saw him drowning, he describes how the gas causes this uh, aloe, this green uh, alone, this green uh, uh, atmosphere haze around them. He tries to make us visualize what is in front of us, but also gives us a sense of how unreal it is, because they are moving as if underwater, you know, water is green light, like if they were slow motion, like if uh, they were drowning. If you watch the, the video now, uh, you can see that this video is in slow motion. You know, it's, uh, no, the video is only white, but imagine it is a uh, green light. And the, the bodies of the dancers are, you know, in mid-air. It's uh, beautiful because they are part of the background. It's like there's no gravity. So there's slow motion. The, the slow movements in this light creates a sense of beauty. But uh, in the poem, when it says, through the misty panes, the panes are, you know, the glasses of the mask, and thick green light, you know, there was the smoke all around them, there was green, is under a green sea. So they were like moving slow motion inside the water. And he saw him drowning could do nothing to help him. Owen, if he's guilt, when he says, in all my dreams, before my helpless sight, he plunges at me, guttering, choking, drowning. Uh, so, 
this uh, episode is not finished. It continues to be lived again in his mind and night, in his nightmare. And he sees himself in front of his friend, helpless, because he could not do anything to help him. And uh, this man plunges him. He, you know, he, he jumps at him, guttering, guttering is when you, you know, there is a, you know, the gas uh, burns inside you. And so there is the, the liquid created by the acid that is coming, that is coming up to mouth, choking, you cannot breathe because there is, you know, all the, the effects of the gas inside his body drowning. And he finally is drowning because he's full of liquid. His burned body is in his mouth. He cannot, he cannot breathe. If in some smothering dreams you too could pace behind the wagon that we flung him in and watch the white eyes writhing in his face, his hanging face, like a devil's sick of sin, if you could hear, at every jolt, the blood come gargling from the froth-corrupted lungs, obscene as cancer, bitter as the cud of vile, incurable sores on the innocent tongues. My friend, you would not tell with such high zest to children ardent for some desperate glory. The old lie. Dulce et decorum est pro patria mori. What happened to this person after he died? He was taken by soldiers and thrown like a you know, stone, an object, into a wagon, a carriage to be taken away. This, this soldier died at war. He was a person. But after he died, because there were so many who were dead, they had to you know, dispose of them very quickly. So they had a wagon, a carriage, and they threw them onto the carriage and to you know, take them away. And this demonstrates the brutality of war and the, the fact that you know, war desensitizes our experiences. We feel without, you know, we are forced to do not feel anything, otherwise we would not move, we, we could not be able to continue. The word flung, that is to throw, is shocking, because it inspires a profound emotional response. Because the word itself suggests a dismissive, violent action. There was no time for compassion or grief. It also suggests that uh, tragedy is something common at war. That is part of everyday life. So you cannot stop because only one person has just died. And then at the end of the poem there's the bitter irony of the poem. When he attacks those who would argue that death in war is glorious. When he says, my friend, you would not tell with such high zest, with such celebration. Now this time, you know, there is a, a, a movement. First, in the first part of the, of the poem, is um, the no person who is speaking. And then he says, if you could hear, at every jolt. Now here, he introduce, he's talking to the reader. If you could hear, so he's talking to a person, to us. And in the end, he says, my friend, you will not tell. So my friend, now he's a very intimate, direct uh, address to us. He's talking to us face to face. And he's saying, in a way, my friend, who is my friend? My friend are those who are at home, who are in England, who are not in France fighting trenches. So it's almost ironic. He betrays his anger because he thinks that those people in England are accountable for what he and many others has had to endure, to suffer. 
and, and he claims that only those who could see in real life the atrocities, the horror of war, could realize that uh, it was an old lie. Why old lie? Old because it is not the first time people said it was you know, glorious and sweet to die for your country. It was something from the past. It was present also in classic literature. That's why it is in Latin. So the old lie, Dulce de Corum est pro patria mori. At the end, we understand that the poem is uh, ironic. Instead of what expected, rousing a patriotic call to war, the poem is exactly the opposite. So the title is uh, striking as the contrast between the patriotism of this line, Dulce de Corum est pro patria mori, and the description, the graphic descriptions of horrors of war. In conclusion, this poem is a deeply emotional poem. They use a, a variety of powerful techniques to express a very powerful message. Through these this, this descriptions of the physical, mental and emotional effects of war, Owen attacks those who would encourage young men to fight without understanding the real horrors of war. And he, in doing so, he highlights the tragedy of innocent men who are misled into sacrificing their lives for their country. Okay, thank you.